three months ago, I bought a 2022, wait, where, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Ah, that's what today's video is about. Three months ago, I bought a 2022 Land Rover, Range Rover, like some special English Wimbledon edition or Lancaster, some whatever, I don't know, something special. $124,000 new in 2022. Fast forward to two years later, I bought it for $61,000, literally less than half of what the MSRP was two years ago, which is wild. One of the fastest depreciating cars I've ever seen. Now in last video, we bought it, we went through it, we brought it to the auction. Today's video, we're bringing it to the auction. I'm gonna show you a lot of supercars, a lot of cool toys. I'm taking to a Highline sale and I'm gonna try to sell this Range Rover for a profit or am I gonna lose? I really don't know, I don't usually win at the auction. If I break even and got to drive a Range Rover for three months, that's considered a win, I think. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Join me at a Highline sale today to see how we're gonna do with a 2022 Range Rover that has literally depreciated in half in two years. Wild, someone else lost money, not me. Hopefully, not me. Come with me, join me. Let's get going. Welcome back to the auction. It is auction day, one day after you saw me drop the Range Rover off. I think I'm at the right place. Mercedes, 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 Lamborghini, Porsche. Porsche, there's the Taycan we saw the other day. I want one of these so, so badly. Basically an Audi RS Q8 that's nicer. I want one. I wanna sell the Range Rover. I wanna sell the Cybertruck. I wanna own one of these in this color. Love it. It's classy, it's elegant. I don't want bright blue. I don't want bright green. I don't want bright orange. This is cool. Although I do like bright red maybe, and I do love blue, like my Corvette. Hmm. GT3, Porsche GT3, just hanging out here. Hey, it's missing five lug nuts, that's weird. 2015 Porsche GT3 with 23,000 miles. Porsche Taycan Turbo over there. Here we go, here's my Range Rover over here. Number one, 140 I believe. She's looking pretty good. Yeah, 2022, 32,000 miles, $124,000 two years ago, that is wild. Running through today, we're gonna to see what it sells for. There's a 2020 with 60,000 miles for 34 grand. That's not looking good for me. Here's a 2017, they all look the same. A 2017 with 100,000 miles going through as well. And then here's a 2018 with 51,000 miles. What is this right here? Oh, it's a Lotus. Okay, that is a Lotus. 2021 Evora. What do they call these? Yeah, Evora. Fun fact about this car, 3.5 liter turbo, I believe, Toyota engine. So you buy this car, you get a Lotus, you get a, essentially a supercar, and you can maintain it, even though it says Lotus right there, you can maintain it like it's a Toyota. Here's a 2018 with 51,000 miles. It's going for 24 grand. Basically same looking car, 24 grand. Wild. 2020, 86,000 miles. See what this goes for. Here's a 2020 with 18,000 miles for $43,000. This is making me very nervous. 43 grand, 43.5, high bid on that. And this one, 2020 with 86,000 miles is 31 grand. Eurus is going through 2021, 50,000 miles. The problem is you have to look out for rentals. A lot of these were bought and purchased as rentals and then you get like rental abuse. And also the mileage can be altered on these fairly simply, I think with just a computer. So the mileage could actually be even more than that. I don't know that at 50,000 miles they'd lie. 155K on the Urus, that is the cheapest one I've seen. If I sell the Cybertruck and the Range Rover, I could buy that. After this Audi R8 that is absolutely beautiful. My Range Rover runs through up there, so we'll see that in just a second. Nine, seven, eight, eight. I don't think it's Here we go. 5960. Two and a half. Come on, boys, don't wait me out. Last call. I got the money. Last call. So the other two bidding. Here we go, Adam. Adam, 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 like 61,250 minus the fees, probably 500 bucks. We'll find out at the end of this video what I actually cleared on it. So I paid 
61, shipped it down here for a thousand. I didn't do anything to it, so I own it for 62. Essentially, depending on what I actually clear, which we'll show you the net check after towards the end of this video, um, I basically drove a Range Rover for three months, 3,000 miles for probably around a thousand dollars, which I couldn't have rented one that cheap. Car payment would have been more than that. And honestly, gone, cashed out. I have 61 G's to go buy something else now. So that's exciting. We'll get to go shopping again in our next video. This coming Tuesday, Corvette and classic car sale, and then Wednesday, Highline sale. So I'm gonna come back here for two more days and then do it again with it's now 60 grand. Hello, how hey, are you? Hey, how you doing? Good, just driving into the city, how are you? I'm good, good. I wanted to tell you what your Land Rover sold for. Yeah. What did I pay for it? 61,000. 61? And then I shipped it down here for 1,000, so 62. And um, I drove it about 3,000 miles. It's sold today for 75. Holy no, shit. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It <laughs> sold for 61,250. So uh, oh, nice. I was pretty spot on. So I essentially yeah, paid no, like a month, one month's car payment to use a Range Rover or something for a couple months. Yeah. So yeah, I'm sub I thought you were going to say it's just because of the way the market has went lower, but that's pretty good. Oh, I, I was bad. nervous. I watched the numbers go down monthly as I scanned that thing. And it wasn't just a Range Rover, it's everything, yeah. everything. So basically broke even. I'm glad my numbers are pretty accurate. Um, I just wanted to tell you where, where you ended up on it. No, it was, that's awesome, cool. I, mean, I wanted to know, I'm following the journey, so thank you. Yeah, it was awesome for three months, so thank you for thinking of me. Of course, I'm glad we made it work. I should also explain something too. So it's been three months. I listed that Range Rover for 69 uh, locally, and I had no messages, no calls. So I was thinking, give it an opportunity to try to run it locally uh, retail to see how we do. Like, was it, would it sell more, get more money selling it retail to somebody? I mean, we're in Palm Beach. That's the perfect car for Palm Beach right now. I mean, every wife in my neighborhood drives either a new Escalade or a Range Rover. So it's the perfect car for being here. I gave it three months to see if it would sell. No calls, minimal messages on Marketplace and everything. And then you get to deal with financing, you get to deal with customers here. I'll get a check today, give them the title give them the gift box and everything. I'll get a check today for what it's gone. So selling wholesale, although, you know, let's say I sold it for 65 retail, I would have actually profited, but it would have been a pain in the butt. Now, drove it for three months, cash out, move on to something else. These were $580. So I cleared a check for 60,385. I, I owned it for 62. The fees killed me. 580 in fees, I sold it for 61. Uh, 60,385, so it cost me about 1,600 bucks. And I drove a Range Rover for three months and uh, made some videos and experimented. I don't try, I don't win. So clearly I'm in the right place. Range Rover, Land 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 Rover, it just keeps going on. Land Rover's everywhere, galore. So clearly I brought the Range Rover to the right place. Now, there's a lot of variables, there's a lot of factors. I bought it three months ago. I brought it to a place that the car's more desirable. I actually offered my friend 58 because I told him, I'm so sorry, I don't wanna do this to you, but this is what it's worth. It's worth 58. This is what it's gonna sell for at auction. You're going down in value fast. I came up, I know the history, I know him, I like him. I came up to 61 as a courtesy. Clearly it was a mistake because I lost money. Uh, if he was gonna trade it in, he knew what he would've got. I told him it would've been around 58. Again. I got to drive it, I sold it easily, I can move on, I did take a $1,600 loss, but I told you at the beginning of this video, values are dropping fast. So in three months, to have only lost $1,600, but also drive it for three months and 3,000 miles, that's actually a win. I shouldn't be sitting on those things, I needed to let it move. So we did, okay, now we can move along and we have $60,000 to spend on a lot of other cool things, like check this stuff out. Bentley, Rolls Royce, Roll, all of these cars, all, it just keeps going, a G-Wagon. This isn't stuff that, like I couldn't sell a Range Rover, what makes me think I'm gonna be able to sell these things? But the beauty of my job is that I get to make videos about stuff. If I can buy this Aston Martin SUV and drive it for a few months and then sell it, make some cool content, that's my dream. Look at how nice this thing is. Open this door up, is this a wrap? Oh. Look at the seats. Look at the interior of this SUV. Maybe I don't want a Lamborghini Urus. Wow. 
Oh my God, I want an Aston Martin, I guess. Wow, this is amazing. Now in the beginning, I spoke about market adjustments, people paying too much. It was just a way of the world at 2020, 2021, and sadly even to 2022. We're not there anymore. So the buyer of this car went with the way of the world. I'm not faulting him for it. He waited for a Range Rover. Range Rovers and G-Wagons were in high, high demand. $112,000 sticker price, MSRP, plus a market adjustment of $12,000, puts the car at $124,000. Two and a half years later, because let's just say he bought at the beginning of 2022, second half of 2024, two and a half years later, that car has more than cut in half in value. He paid $124,000, I sold it for sixty, dollars cleared sixty. dollars So I said cut in half, near cut in half. It was about 40% loss on that car, which is just tremendous, in two years and 30,000 miles. So what's gonna happen now, and I have a video coming out about this, people are either gonna just have to own their cars till the, light, till the end of the loan and then take their losses, or they sell them at a loss now, where they go through repossession, which you're gonna start seeing a lot more repos because people are now financially tapped. They are officially tapped. They've spent their savings, they've maxed out their credit cards, people are struggling. Everything's more expensive. Bidenomics worked well for us. It's gonna get a lot of hate on this video, I know, but it's what happened. My friend was willing to take the loss and move on because he bought another car. Just take the loss, move on, repurpose your money in something else, and then start over. That's what I did with my dealership. I owned some stuff for too much. I sold it. I took the losses for a long time. You guys watched me make a bunch of videos. This is taking a loss, taking a loss, taking a loss. Took a loss, cashed out, reframed the business, bought things that are selling now according to the market today, and we're profitable again. So you just take the loss, move on, it sucks, but some people have to do it. Now the problem is not everybody can afford to take a loss like that. My friend had to take cash out of his bank account to pay off the car so I can get the title so I could sell at a loss. If he didn't have that kind of money, he would be in trouble. He would just be paying on that Range Rover till it's paid off. It, it, a lot of struggle, a lot of problems for a lot of people. It's all because of the car market. It's all because of inflation. It's all because of what happened post COVID. Things have changed. Don't pay market adjustment. Don't even pay MSRP anymore. Things are negotiable. I have a whole other video coming out about this shortly. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. Adios. I got into this business because I like cars. I have a passion for cars. What better way to constantly own a different car and get to enjoy it than do it the way I do it? Don't have to register them, don't have to insure them, I get to drive them, I get to use them, I get to sell them a little bit or if I break even or if I make a profit. That is my dream. And I get to share all of my experiences with you guys and sometimes I win and sometimes I lose and I just have to win more than I lose. Yes, I would have made more on a $5,000 car profit wise, but a $5,000 Honda Civic doesn't make me happy. The Range Rover made me happy for three months straight. And Aston Martin would make me happy for three months straight. Shooting videos about this green G-Wagon and sharing it with you guys and having you watch it and enjoy it makes me really happy. It's all about happiness, right? It's not about the almighty boss. So anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Beware, prices are dropping fast. I bought a Ferrari for $30,000 less than I sold one for back in January. Same car. Beware, prices are dropping. They flattened out on a lot of things. People own their cars for too much money and they're not letting them go so repos are up or they're just going to hang on to them because they have too much negative equity there's a lot going on beware watch out thanks for watching please like this video and subscribe if you love my car content i appreciate the support I'll see you guys all later i don't think i've ever said this before but i love every one of you for watching my stuff thanks for helping me be able to do what i do and share it with you guys